What are the challenges that funders are going to face over the next few years? Well, I'm going to start with the age-old funders' dilemma. How much do you support what's great about the present in terms of practice? And how much do you make bold choices about what a fit-for-purpose future might look like? It's a tricky one. At the National Lottery Community Fund, we're balancing this at the moment by running an Emerging Futures Fund where we're spending small amounts of money with lots of different community organisations and dreamers about what a different future might look like alongside the sort of classic capacity building, investing in what's already out there, meeting the needs of um, everyday communities with some of the challenges they face today. That's a tough one. Uh, what's my second one? Uh, how do we build a better funding ecology? I talk quite a lot about generous leadership uh, and the need to think about um, an ecological context rather than an organisational one. How do we make the funding ecology work better uh, for applicants and for ultimately for people and communities? Uh, how do we make sure that we're thinking about what's the common good rather than what's necessarily just best for us? And um, there are real signs of progress here. We participate in something called the London Funders Group, where we fund collectively. Uh, 360 Giving has been a brilliant initiative to make funding more transparent. Conversations take, are taking place about joint applications, joint monitoring, and also thinking strategically about where investment goes. I think that's something for us as a group of national lottery funders um, to think more about, and we are doing, particularly around things like place. So thinking as funders about ecology rather than about ourselves as individual organisations, I think, is a, is a real challenge um, and one that practitioners should always challenge us about. Third one... Uh, got to be on everyone's agenda. How do we uh, improve all our approaches on equity, diversity and inclusion? I think I've got two things that I would particularly emphasise here. How do we really build lived experience right through our organisations, not putting it in a little group that sits at the side? How do we um, think about uh, broadening our table? How do we think about participatory grant making where decision making is shared uh, and lived and learnt experience sit side by side? We've been doing some experimenting around this and are hoping to move forward um, in lots of different ways, including working with other funders in partnerships, uh, but also including working with communities of practice about decision making around funding. My fourth one, uh, digital and data, has to be on the list. Uh, it's been extraordinary to look at the number of applications we've had coming in during the crisis to move services online. Uh, that's obviously something that mainstream kind of social welfare charities can do and have had to do. It's a much tougher call for arts practitioners, I completely understand that, depending on sort of the nature of the work. Um, as, as the chair of the Kiln Theatre, I know just how painful um, lockdown and COVID has been, and we don't really know what's going to happen in the future. But it does mean, I think, that we will have to be smarter about how we use digital. We have to think as funders about how we encourage organisations to use it intelligently, how we build more activity online, but also build that back to people's lives, um, people's relationships uh, and kind of real in situ practice. I also think there's a, a kind of developing area for funders to think about the ethics around digital and data. Uh, and funders can sometimes bring, perhaps this is more the Trust and Foundations, an independent perspective to this, issues of governance, of stewardship, of ownership, of legitimacy and transparency. So lo lots of issues around there. Fifth area, who's giving? Uh, and what's the nature of giving? Uh, Captain Tom has been quite a phenomenon, but he isn't unique um, and alone. He's certainly been the most successful. There have been a number of practitioners like that. Um, how is individual giving going to change? Uh, how does one encourage more high net worth giving? And how will traditional funders like trust and foundations have to change and adapt? So, for example, some foundations may find the value of their assets have reduced, they'll have less money. Corporate foundations likely find uh, lower profits and therefore less money flowing. I'm the trustee of the London Marathon. Um, we won't be generating profits to make charitable grants um, this year, inevitably, because there's no marathon. Uh, so lots of ways in which funders are also hit, uh, and we have to reinvent the way in which we think Think about funding. I hope that there's also an opportunity to think about grants are good um, as opposed to grants are something that uh, one needs to sort of put as a second order thing and commissioning is better. 
Uh, I hope the value of giving and grant making will come back to the fore. Maybe that's the idealist in me. And then finally, um, I'm going to return right back to the beginning um, of something that I worked on probably, yeah, 20 years ago um, with Claw and two wonderful people called Rowan Dodds and Claire Cooper called Money Mission Models, the three M's. And the three M's is all about how you build an organisation that needs to be mission driven uh, and the models therefore reflect what's right for the mission and you make the money work for the models and the mission uh, and how it has become too easy in the pursuit of funding for models to start to focus too much on uh, money and lose sight of mission. So I always hold that right at the heart of my thinking. <laughs>